So a little bit more about strings. Strings we've been using all along, but strings are not a primitive data type and they are also not a wrapper class. A string is an object and it's a sequence of characters. But much like the wrapper classes, the string class provides a lot of helpful methods for dealing with them. Let's have a look at the Java doc. So here we see it says that this string is equivalent to an array of characters. So this is what I was saying before, how a string is essentially a sequence of characters. So you can access a string just like you would an array of characters, and each character is an element in an array. Here are some of the methods available. Some popular ones like char at. This one will allow you to get a specific character within the string by its index. This is how you would iterate a string as you would an array. So you won't be able to use the brackets like we use for other arrays. You would use the char at within a loop, for example. Or if you wanted to get the very first element of the string, you can do a char at with it index of zero. There's also this one contains which is really useful. So this will allow you to see if a string contains a certain sequence of characters for example. Equals we've used before as well as equals ignores case. Ends with is a good one. So you want to know if something is at the end of a string. There's also a starts with. And then this format one we've talked about a little bit in previous chapters where you can use placeholders and then add items back into the string. There's index of where you can pass in some substring of the string and it'll tell you what position that is within the string. Is empty, you want to know if this string has data in it or not. Length lets us know how many characters are in the string and we can use this just like we use on the arrays. There's also this matches one where you can pass in a regular expression and see if the string matches that regular expression. Replace and replace all. So if there's something within a string that you want to change to something else, you can use these replace methods. Split is also a good one where you have a string and you want to divide it by some delimiter. Here's the starts with that I mentioned. Here's substring where you can get part of the string you can give it a beginning and also an ending index and just get that portion of the string there's a two lower case which is really useful and two upper case as well trim to get off some of the white spaces at the beginning or the end of a string and then value of where you're able to pass in any data type and get the string value of it to see some of these cool methods in action let's write a program we're going to create a method that counts the number of words in a string and prints them individually on a new line. So I created a new class called text processor and we're just going to make a call to a method that we'll create. We'll call this count words and we'll pass it a string. Let's say I love test automation university. Okay, now let's create this method. And we'll give it a Java doc. Okay, so we have this text here that's been passed in and we want to split this by some delimiter, by tokenizing it. So what would be something that would indicate that this is a new word in the string? Well, we can look at possibly a space. So let's use the space as the delimiter. We could say, let's use var words equals text.split. And in here, you'll give it what's the delimiter. And our delimiter is a space. So we're saying to take this text and split it everywhere you see a space. And that will be stored into words, which is an array of strings. So once we have that, we'll need to see how many words there are. So we can say int number of words equals, and we'll use this words dot length. And then we can print this out. 
So we'll say the message equals, and let's use string.format. And I'm going to use percent %d, which is a placeholder for a number, and we'll say words. And then the second argument is what should we replace percent %d with. Then we can just print this message out. And now we want to print the words out. So we can do a for loop. Let's run it. And here in the output, we see your text contains five words and we see each of the five words listed. Let's look at another example. We're going to create a method that prints a given string backwards. For example, if given the word camel, it prints Lamac. So let's make a call to a new method, reverse string, and we'll give it something. Hello, TAU. And we'll create that method. And so we're given the string. And we want to essentially loop through this string, just as we would an array. But this time we want to loop from the back to the front of the string. So let's create our for loop. We want to start with the last character of this string. So we can say text.length. However, text.length is going to give us the number of characters. But remember, indexes start at zero. So we have to say the length minus one. And that'll give us the index of the very last character. And then we'll say while i is greater than or equal to zero. So that means it's gotten to the front by this point. And instead of i plus plus, we're going to use i minus minus. And in here, we can simply print out And notice we're not going to do print ln because we want it all on the same line. We can do our text dot. And remember I told you you cannot use the brackets for this, right? So while this essentially is an array of characters, it is still an object. So we need to do dot char at and then give it the index. So let's see this one run. Wonderful. And we see hello TAU is now printed backwards. The string object is immutable, which means it does not allow for manipulation of the actual string itself. And while there are lots of great methods for strings, in order to do things like insert or delete characters from a string, you need to use the string builder class. Let me demonstrate this with an example. We're going to create a method that adds spaces to a jumbled string where all words are written together with no spaces. Each new word begins with a capital letter. So let's make a call to a new method called add spaces. And we'll pass it some text. Let's say, hey world, it's me, Angie. And we'll go ahead and create this method. So I'm going to create a new instantiation of the string builder text. And we'll instantiate this to string builder. And this takes the text. Now let's loop through this. So what we want to do now is as we're looking at each character of this string, we want to determine if it is an uppercase. If it is an uppercase, then we need to insert a space into this string. And as I said, strings are immutable, so we wouldn't be able to do this with just this regular string object of text. 
that's why we needed to use this string builder which will allow us to modify a string so I want to say if I is not equal to zero meaning this is not the first letter of the string because we don't want to add a leading space to the beginning of the string and and I'm going to use the character wrapper class so that I can use these nice methods available. I want to use is uppercase. So I can then pass in this specific character by using the char at. So I'm saying if this character is uppercase, then I know to add a space here. Then I can say, take this modified text and insert. And this will take a position. So the position is I, wherever we are right now, and insert a space. Once I've gotten here, I want to increment I so that we move past the space that we've just entered and onto the character which then, once it comes back here, will go on to the next character. So by inserting this space, I'm now just moving us past that insertion place. And then we'll print it out. Let's run it. Beautiful. So we went from this jumbled string to now something that's readable. Here are popular text processing methods from the character, string, and string builder classes. And here's your optional exercise for this chapter. You'll need to verify the strength of a proposed password change. The password must be at least eight characters long, contain an uppercase letter, contain a special character, not contain the username, and not be the same as the old password. Good luck.